as though there is a group of black people, the descendants of slaves born in America, it seems as though there is a faction or a certain group of us that have a or a, uh, a dislike or and or a hatred towards Africa. I just recently posted a video proclaiming and making perfectly clear that I am a child of Africa. I also want to make very clear that Africa is just something I use so that we can have an idea of what I'm talking about. But it is not the Africa of today. And it is not really the Africa of yesterday. It's just something that I use to help guide us and give us a picture where I want to take us. It's just because that's what we know. We don't know anything other than the continent of Africa. We don't know what it was called during the time of our ancestors. Our ancestors were not called Africans. Our ancestors were not called black either. So, at this time, the only thing we know of is Africa. So, I will... For the, at the, for the time being, can only reference to this state of being or condition that we know of this continent known as Africa. So that's where my ancestors come from. That's who I am. I'm not a, an American or African American because my ancestors were kidnapped and brought here by force. And I cannot claim America unless America claims me. And how does America claim me? America claims me by giving me true freedom, justice, and equality. And that's something that has been denied the African ever since being here for the last 400 years. We are given crumbs. We are given pieces. And even, uh, and even when given these pieces and these crumbs, we have to fight obstacles in order to get it. We have to risk being raped and hung and laughed and mocked to get the little crumbs. So I'm not impressed by America. Especially when America has offered my people no apology, show no remorse for the wickedness that they've done to us and still do it as I speak for the last 400 years. So I can easily claim my ancestry, which is Africa, but I cannot claim and be truthful to you to be an American. In fact, that is also something forced on me. I did not ask to be American. That was forced on me. So being brought here was involuntary and being an American citizen is also involuntary. And those who claim that I am a citizen don't treat me like that. But there is dislike and hatred towards Africa from some of us who are the descendants of slaves born in America. And why is this? Many feel shame 
being the descendants of slaves. They don't want to talk about it. I ain't no slave. Of I don't want to talk about it. They don't want you to mention slavery. They don't want to, they don't want themselves to be associated with Africa. I ain't no African. No, get away. I, I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. That's how they act. <laughs> That's how they act. When you talk about Africa. When you talk about slavery. They don't want to hear it. These are very sick individuals. Because as black or as dark. And some they don't even want to argue about that. Black is just a description. That don't mean we are black as black. Which some of us are very, very dark. It's just a description of a people. So we said black. But they are silly. I, I, I'm not black. I, I'm brown. You can see very clearly. That I'm brown. I'm not actually black. If you put my skin against black. I'm not black. But I am black. That's a description. For the time being. Because that's what we know. But I am. But I am not black. So I do agree with you. That's something that was forced upon us by the oppressor. But these who reject their ancestry, reject where they came from, feel shame being a slave. And look where the slaves have come from. The slaves came from involuntary servitude. Now you say that the slave is a president from which he was a slave. Well, we cannot say that for Barack Obama. Barack Obama did not come from black people that were slaves in America. He's just partially black. But look at far we've come and we have some kind of shame at our progress. I'm very proud at everything. Even though some of our brothers and sisters' accomplishments even though some of it may look negative, but I'm happy, just like Richard Pryor said in a concert long time ago. I'm happy for any black man that do anything. I'm not jealous of you. I'm not envious of you. Because the better you do, the better I'm looked upon. Because we're all the same. There is no person, there is no black man in this country that can rise higher than your people. So if your people are still looked upon as clowns, as slaves, or whatever degenerate description they place upon us, you will too. So I don't care how much money Oprah got. She's a black woman, a Negro. I'm going to say it. I, the, she's a nigger with money. Michael Jordan is a nigger with money. Bill Cosby is a rich slave. Because they come from people who are still seen in a negative light. So I don't care what they say, I don't care what they do. They will always be and still be niggas until the condition of the people who are on the lowest, who are the lowest and who are on the bottom until they rise. And the sad thing about it is that with all the money, all the influence that these so-called successful, and we're not just talking about entertainment. We have brothers and sisters who have made great fortunes in law and the sciences in business in general. They do very little to help those from where they came from. So the hood is still the hood because those who came from out of the hood don't go back because they are ashamed of the hood and they are ashamed of being black. They are ashamed of being the child of slaves. So what they do, they try to integrate and become white as possible. As black as you are, you try to become white. And Caucasian people won't tell you, but they laugh at you. Look how silly you look. Color your hair blonde. You get black plastic surgery and straighten out your nose, cut up your lips, cut up your jaw, trying to look like them, trying to act like them. White folks, 
behind your back talk about you like a dog because you look so stupid and silly because you trying to look like them and before you lie Caucasian people y'all look just as stupid trying to act so what you call black trying to do black things trying to talk in bonnets or whatever so you just as silly but see, you're not as silly as black folk, because see, you run the country. The Caucasian people control the earth, so they can afford to be a little silly. But when you don't have that under your belt, it makes you just look really, really pathetic and pitiful. Many of us feel as though Africa abandoned us. And the Africa of today, because of their attitudes and what they're doing amongst their own, I understand why you feel that way. But I want to say this to you about Africa. Africa has been under attack for a long, long time. The countries that you see in Africa right now, they have just recently, within the last 50 years, gained their freedom back. Africa is a conquered continent. Just like we in America, we are a conquered people. Destroyed. The only difference between us and those who are living on the African continent is that they are still on that land while we are not. They have been turned into white people too. Some of them speak English better than white folks do. Many of them believe in Jesus Christ greater than the white man who gave it to them. The only difference between them and us being in Africa they still maintain some of who they are. Some of who they are. Because what they have done, they've taken some of the old African cultures and, and, and religions and ways of life and they mixed it with what the white people taught them. And this makes them even messed up. Because, and that would make things even more messed up for us because some of us want to embrace Africa, but we must understand that Africa, some of those things in Africa have been tainted by the racist European Caucasian people who conquered them. So we are under attack. And Africa has been under attack. You feel abandoned by Africa. But if you and I, we are friends, and both of us come under attack. How can I help you when I'm trying to get this sucker off my back? So, so at the same time, we are struggling and fighting in America upon this strange soil. We must also remember that our brothers and sisters in Africa was also fighting and invading and losing. So I'm fighting, power. You fight. Why do you feel I abandon you when I'm trying to get the iron beat this sucker off my back yet? I can't expect you to help me. You over there trying to get the suckers off of you. So I want to let you and, and let y'all know something. In my opinion, Africa has not abandoned and never abandoned us. They, they had a sucker that was trying to kill them and did destroy much of Africa and conquer. Just like we were uh, conquered. I can't help you if I can't help myself. They can't help us when they can't help themselves. And once they lost the fight. How can they help you? Africa.
Africa lost. Everything we talk about of Africa, of what they used to do, and that's all we can talk about, what they used to do, because they lost. And they took on the ways, just like we have, they taken on the ways of the oppressor. So really, black people, it's according who can do what. Whoever can break the shackles of this European mind first can help the other. And slowly but surely, that's happening. Slowly but surely. It would seem as though the black people in America is the key to the unification of the dark people all over the planet. Because we do. We've been lost for so long from our people. And we get so happy to learn about who we are we begin to reach out to everybody, but they don't reach out to us. That's because they are, they have recently gotten this oppressor off them. They are in bad shape. So somebody got to be the better person. Listen to me. Somebody has to be the better person and reach out to somebody else. And all of us need a rude awakening. All of us need to be reprogrammed because all of us have become the tools and exploited by the European Caucasian invader. That's what you must understand. There are good and bad Africans, just like in America. In America, you have the backyard Negroes, dark Europeans, the Uncle Toms, those of us who Malcolm uh, described as field Negroes who want to be free. The same situation in Africa. In Africa, you have the same type of persons in Africa. Because there are beautiful African people that come to this nation who no, and they will agree very quickly to everything that I'm telling us. And they want to reach out to the black man and woman in America. These are individuals. We hope that from individuals we can influence nations and countries. But there I have myself been introduced to many African brothers and sisters and those from the islands who understand what this European has done to us in America and around the world and want to break that slave mentality and reach out to those of whom were divided. Then there are those bad Africans who are the who is the Uncle Tom African, the backyard Negro African. They are used by the oppressor because of that mentality. And they do this voluntarily. Because they have been shaped by the conqueror. Just like the Uncle Tom, the backyard Negro, dark Europeans have been shaped by the oppressor. The oppressor don't have to say nothing. Just living in, this, in his society, in, under his influence, they will come to this country and even though they have black skin, even though they might be African, if you didn't know no better, you was talking to a white person or an Uncle Tom Negro. These are used against us who are struggling, who know better. And because of their dark skin, they will be used as an example why we can't do this? Why we can't do that? Look at these. Look at this Uncle Tom. Look at this backyard Negro African. Look what they do. Nothing but good slaves. So they try to use, they use the divide and conquer. Even though both people are slaves, they divide 
the house Negro from the field Negro. When it's all said and done, they both slaves, but they too stupid to understand that they are being used by these people. So you have African, stupid African, who don't know no better. And you use them like they represent Africa and they don't. Just like the upper town Negroes, backyard Negroes in America, they don't represent me. And they will tell you quickly, well, you don't represent me either. I don't want to represent you. I don't want to be you. I want to be free. If you're happy in the white man's house, then so be it. But don't bring your nigga ass to me, grumbling, talking about, I shouldn't hate, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do that. Take your nothing headed ass on. And don't think that I'm going to allow you to teach our children that cowardly, silly, uh, degrading garbage. You pathetic collar, yellow back. Scratching where you don't itch. Boot licking. Coward. And if y'all want to debate somebody, then you need to debate these silly backyard Negro Africans and these upper time Benedict Arnold niggas living in America. Why you wasting your time want to debate me? Debate Sarasun City. De debate Sarnetta, debate uh, Brooklyn Morris, debate our brothers and sisters. We all want the same thing. We want to be free. That's a waste of time. Debate the enemies. Those who are against what we want and we want to be free. By any means necessary. By any means necessary. Some of these Africans that come to this country, what they don't tell us, some of them come from affluent families in Africa. They have money, and money sends their children to America to learn or whatever, to play around or whatever they come to do. And then some of these Africans get aid from America. Why, why would America who for hundreds of years haven't did nothing for us born here why would they want to help the African give them food stamps give them business loans help them but they don't help us who are born here. Why is that? Because they use them against us and they know they are silly. And they know we are silly. So they'll have us fighting amongst each other while they sit in the background and laugh. So I will let the African and these upper times and whatever, I'll let them go about their business. I'm not going to waste my time arguing and debating them. We need to just do what we have to do. Otherwise, this devil that set it all in motion, he'll sit back and laugh. And he knows as long as we are under uh, at each other's throat, his world has more time to live when it should be dying. We should not allow this oppressor, African brother and sister, those from Haiti, those from uh any place in Africa, the islands, we should not allow this oppressor who has jumped on all of us. That's the enemy, not another black face. Another black face can help you unless they made it quite clear, I'm with my mother. There are many Africans who have this Caucasian racist as a mother, and we already know there are many Negroes in America who happy to say, I'm an American. That's my mother. And this, this mother ain't did a damn thing for you. Don't come around me. You don't need to come in. Take your ass on. I damn sure don't want to be where you're at. But for those of us who know better, then get on this train. Let, allow me to get on your train. Let us embrace one another.
Africa has enough problems on its own. So Africa don't need a bunch of immoral, as the as religious teachings would say, Africa doesn't need a bunch of immoral people trying to come. They're already in bad shape. They need what well, they need the best we can bring to that continent because it is destroyed. It has been broken up. They don't need crack addicts in Africa. They don't need us having babies out of wedlock, having no control or discipline to ourselves. They don't need drunkards. They don't need black folks that kill other black folks, murderers, and we happy about it. We don't need dope sellers in Africa. They don't need folks like that. They don't need us in the sad condition that we exude. They need us in our best light. Otherwise, we need to stay away from Africa because they're already doing bad as is. We don't want to make a bad problem even worse. So we need to get ourselves together. And as long as we behave the way we behave, who will want us? You don't even want yourself. You know you're in bad shape. So why would Africa or anybody else want you? Nobody's going to take us in nowhere. Anybody with any sense wants a good roommate. You want to try to find somebody that's clean, somebody who respects the other roommates, somebody who paid their fair share of the utilities and the rent. That's what you want. You don't want somebody who won't pay their rent a, a, a dope fiend might steal from you and all that kind of stuff. Africa don't need that from us. And we don't need that type of situation from Africa either. It's, it goes both ways. Now, at one time, the black American, we had good work ethics. I remember when I was growing up, most men work. And I remember when I was growing up, most uh, women, especially wives, did not work. They would be married and the sister would stay home with the children, don't have to worry about working. The male would work three or four jobs, whatever it took to take care of his nine children and his wife. And he had skills. Most of the men, when I was growing up, they knew, they built their own houses. They uh, put the electricity in their own houses, the plumbing, all kinds of skills. They fixed their cars. They did all that. What do we have today? Most of these young men, they can barely put a tire on their car. They can't change the battery. The sisters can't cook. They can't sew. They have no kind of skills. What are you offering? You want to go back to Africa, what do you have to offer? Can you pay your fair share of the bill? Will you be, could we be a good roommate at this time? No. So we have to straighten ourselves up. And Africa has to get better too. We both need to be taught. We both are sleeping lions. We both need to become awakened. Because once we become awakened, all these things will come to us because that's what we are. We've always been a hard-working people. We are an intelligent people. We are not these animals that we've learned and accepted and have become. This is something forced upon us by our situation of being conquered people and being slaves. Integration and the welfare system, affirmative action, and all these different things, some of it was seen as a help, but actually it has become a detriment because it took our fire away from us. When you make things easier, 
black people prior to affirmative action, prior to all these special programs, and a citizen of the United States shouldn't have to have special programs. I don't need your special programs. Black people, I'm proud of us in this nation. We became scientists and legislators. In fact, I heard that really before the United States actually became the United States, the first real president of the United States was black. Before the white man did that flip and created white supremacy. But we are a part of this nation, but we don't get credit. We don't get credit for being part of this nation that made this nation as great as it, as it has become, especially with 400 years, 300 years of free slave labor and 100 years of underpaid labor, not just physically, but we are inventors. We are educators. We're part of the lawmaking body everywhere. And that's way before special programs. But with integration, it took some of that fire away from us. And once we began or began to integrate into white America, it got to the point where many of our, of our elders feel we made it. And so since we made it, that fire, that drive, that work ethic, that pride in ourselves, we begin to lose it. Because all of our success, all of our accomplishments went to the white man. So, and all the credit went to the white man. Now all the debit, anything that's detrimental, they placed upon us and we placed upon ourselves. And so now we have our poor baby in 2011. They don't have nothing to be proud of. Nobody to look up to. And of course, they use Oprah and Bill Cosby. and uh, They belong to white folks. And the children, even though they little, they see that. You don't have to be blind. They belong to white folks. They don't belong to us. I've never seen Michael Jordan or Bill Cosby or Oprah or any of these so-called successful blacks stand up and say, I belong to black America. And I'm building this school for black America. I'm creating these jobs for black America. They got all this money and everything they all goes right back to white folks. And you can be a child and you don't, and you don't have to be and you could be blind and still see this. An African nation in this healing process, I would encourage African nations to begin to offer black America a part of you. Just like when America opened up the West, many black people who were free slaves. They packed up their bags because they were giving away free land in the West. And the free slave went to the West to take, a, take the opportunity of free land. And as you go West, the black people built towns. And towns would turn into cities. But before that could happen, the oppressor, the white man, destroyed those towns. Because if you have a town, that means you have your own barbershop, you have your own bakery, you have everything that you need and created on your own. And the white man in this country don't want us to have our own. They want to keep you in a slave-like condition so that you can keep looking up to them. But if Africa offered the same thing to black America, and allow us to build our own nation upon your land. And we want to prove to be a good roommate. Then we can build cities and towns 
and a, a nation that you would be proud to help cause to come into existence. You cannot be free without land. And this goes out to anybody that's out there to see the potential in black folks. As long as we live in America because these Caucasians don't want you to be better than them, they're going to do everything they can and keep this these systems designed to keep us in a slave-like condition. So we need to be in a place where our talent can rise to the highest of heights. Where the people who put us in that position will be proud that you grow. Because they know if we grow, it'll help them in their growth and development. This bond between Africa and the so-called African American, we must get ourselves together on the cover of the Muhammad Speaks. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad had a picture of the black people here reaching out to the brothers and sisters in Africa hand in hand. That's what we need to be seeking. That's the key. And if there is a God in your heart, for those of you who believe in God, and even though those of you who may not believe in God, but you understand what has happened to us in our struggle against white supremacy, you know that the only key, the only hope that we have is what we call black unity. All dark people need to become as one family. The only way white supremacy can be destroyed is by black unity. I did not say black supremacy. The only way we can destroy white supremacy and that's what put us in this horrid condition is black unity. Not black supremacy. Not black power. Black unity. Now, white supremacy exists because it is wanted. And for those Caucasian people listening to me, the reality is white supremacy exists. When we talk about white supremacy, they always bring up the Ku Klux Klan and the Nazi Party. White supremacy or the Ku Klux Klan, the Nazi Party, that's a consequence, that's a result of white supremacy. The Ku Klux Klan did not create white supremacy. The historians, the scholars, those white people in power created white supremacy. And it is something that you have been conditioned. I want to talk to white people. You've been conditioned to believe, whether you say it out of your mouth or not, directly or indirectly, you, you have been programmed to believe having white skin is the best, that you are superior. And everything other than white should bow down to you. You've been conditioned that way for hundreds of years until it's become natural. You can't help it. Just like these black folks. We have been conditioned to be slaves and whatever you say, we listen. Now what a, a black man say, oh that, that nigga ain't talking about nothing. But if the white man said the same thing, oh wow, wow, I just learned something. The white man said the same thing the black guy just said. That's because we, for hundreds of years, have been slaves. And that's what you don't understand. So when a black man began to talk and he speaks freely, you're not used to a real free black person. Physically free, but you never and don't understand when a black man's mind 
mind is mentally free. Because you think when you open your mouth, black people are supposed to bow down and take your advice and, and treat you like you're some kind of God. I don't care how poor you are, as long as you got white skin, we are supposed to bow down to you because you've been programmed that way. Those days are over. And you have to understand they are over. You're not used to black folks disobeying you, ignoring your advice, because you have a slave master, you have a superior complex, that you're superior over everything, black people, elephants, bees, and whatever, I'm the great, that's how you've been programmed. Many white people claim they are not prejudiced. But they enjoy the benefits of white, supremacy, of white supremacy. And your media, just for an example, your media is, is an example. When you look at TV, who do you see? It's supposed to be a mixed society, but who do you see? You see nothing but Caucasian people. Am I lying? Jot down your comments, white people. Call me a liar. When you listen to your radio, Who's the main voice on radio? Your voice. White folks' voice. On TV, who do you see? White people. In magazines, white people. If I'm lying, show it to me. Put it down in your comments. You know I'm not lying. And you like it that way. Because if you didn't like it that way, we would see you trying to make everything mixed. But it's not mixed. The advantage goes to you. And you know this. So is that hate speech? Or is that the truth? When something is not wanted. You see people. Like some instance. If when you was a child. And you didn't like vegetables. When something is not wanted. You would take it off your plate. You throw it in the trash. When something when you get junk mail, you throw it in the trash. When something is not wanted, if it's a girl or a man or a woman that like you and you don't want them, you do everything you can to keep them away. But the Caucasian people in America and around the earth, they are in denial. Because if white supremacy was not wanted, it would not exist. You would throw it in the trash. You will take it off your plate. But it is alive and it is well. And you even admit it. Because you want to try to blame the Ku Klux Klan. They don't control law. They don't control education. They don't control the media. Who control it? You. With your white supremacist mind. Some of you don't mind having it. And you will admit. I like having an advantage because of my white skin. Those people I can work with. But then there are those Caucasians who enjoy the benefits of white supremacy. Everything is, but we give y'all this and, and, and look at your society. It's all white. And that's not all right. How would you feel if all the opportunities was going to black folks? Matter of fact, you get upset because of the special program, the special treatment we get. You get upset over that. And we don't get we're not getting anything out of it. You even benefit from that. Foreign whites from foreign countries and foreign blacks and women benefit from these special programs than the black community itself because of the black community itself benefit from the special treatment and the special program, then you should see our communities do better. And those blacks that do better, they get out of the hood. They leave the black community and they benefit you. If whites, if whites did not like or was against white supremacy, then you would encourage Black unity. You would encourage the black people in America to embrace and
burn with their ancestral home. But you're not. You want these blacks to stay right here and be black versions of you. They dark, but they have your mentality. Think like you, act like you, walk like you. You don't want them to embrace Africa. But if you wasn't a white supremacist, you would say, look, y'all look really silly trying to be white. All the black people in this country, y'all need to try to learn who you are. How many white people tell black folks you need to go back to Africa, not physically, but go back to Africa in the mind? Because we are citizens of this nation and we have an investment. But we need to invest going back to our mind. We need to be free and out of your mind. I am not European. I'm an African. I'm black. I look dumb and silly trying to act and be white. And that's all you have in America is nothing but a bunch of black folks, nothing but dark versions of you. Then you want to get angry and upset about how they act, how they behave. They are you. They are the walking images of you. And if you don't like it, then that's just too bad. Because you made them. They were educated. They live in a society. Everything that they speak, your language, your religion, your culture, everything about these blacks is you. So if you are, if you are upset with the so-called Negro, the nigga in America, you made them. This is your Frankenstein. You should be happy for people like me and others that's trying to break out of your mentality. Then once we, once we become ourselves, then you can blame us. But right now, all these Negroes, the niggas, the Uncle Tom, Benny, all of backyard niggas, all that's you. All of it's you. And if you don't want it to continue to be you, then you should ask these blacks to embrace their black side, their Africanness. Go home. You can be an American, but be yourself. Not white. The Caucasian people of America and around the earth, they fear black unity because they think that black unity, African unity, the, the unification of the dark people of the earth, because they know their history. They know what they've done to us. They believe that black unity means their enslavement that we would turn around and oppress them even bring to them physical death and that makes them more afraid especially when they go out on the streets and they see brothers with these megaphones talking about kill the white man kill the white kids <laughs> I mean that's not no different How do black folks feel when, you used to, when we used to see white men burn the cross? And they used to talk about how they wanted to hang a nigga. So now the shoe is on the other foot because there's a chance that black unity can happen. So it makes them very much afraid. So you can't blame them for doing everything they can to stop black unity. But I want to tell you this. Black unity does not represent white death. In fact, black is just a description. It is not a color at all. That came from white supremacy. This movement of unification of these dark-skinned persons it's just simply a movement to heal the injury caused by white supremacy that created black, that created the African. It's a movement to bring justice and righteousness back to the human family, beginning with those who are in the worst condition, 
who just so happened to have dark skin. Did you hear what I said? The Bible calls it, I'm going to say that again, because I don't, I want to make, I want white folks to stop being so scared. Black unity is not black at all. It's just a movement to bring justice, what we call morality, back to the human family. Beginning with those who are in the worst condition. And those who are in the worst condition on the planet just so happen to be have dark skin. Color is what brought the injustice. So we have no choice but to deal with color so that you know what the hell we're talking about. In religion, the Bible says that we need to be born again. It does not talk about one particular race. It talks about humanity needs to be born again. In religion, it says that the prophets, Muhammad came to the Arabs and Jesus was supposed to have come to the Jews and Moses to the Hebrews and whatever. The prophets may have come to or out of a particular people, but the messages that they brought was for all of humanity. Because all of humanity have gone astray, as it says, uh, they have grown short the glory of God. All of them have come up short. The message is supposed to be for all people. We are in the beginning stages of a process of destroying savagery, finding your humanity, then Evolving from the human into what we call God. as just a title. Now, what is demonstrated in this time, this time is showing us the human being at his or her worst. And we do not want to make the mistake of this ever again. I want to bring this talk to uh, its conclusion by saying this to us. <clears throat> the bad news is that we who are living today, now the good news that we, the good news is that we can come from up out of this savage development or condition, evolve into the human being, and and we can become, we can begin the process of God. Now, the bad news is that those who live today, we are the catalyst. All right, I would like to apologize for the slight interruption, and I changed my time to show you the difference between part one and part two, and chances are I learned how to use this uh, video maker, so chances are I will combine part one and part two. Again, things happen. I was really in a roll with part one, and things happen for a reason we don't know. But anyway, I would like to bring this talk to conclusion. This is part two. Now, before I really get into the conclusion of my original subject, this is an addition I did not know that was coming. Let me explain. There was a person who was on my friends list. So much of a friend, they did attempt to send this ministry a donation. So that tells you how close this person was. This person would call me on weekends and talk for hours. 
So you would think that we would have a respectful and sort of close relationship. But this video where I am attempting to bring us closer to where our ancestors come from, closer to that which we are, this makes this person very angry. So they write in the comments of not this video but the original video which I still will leave posted. I remove the comments but this person tells me they are greatly disappointed that I would suck up to Africa. And my sucking up to Africa makes me an enemy to black people in this nation. And that's your opinion. You have the right to do that. Now, my problem is not with his opinion. My problem is you call my house and you act chummy chummy with me as long as I do something that you like, something you can bear with. But when I do something or say something you don't like, then all of a sudden I'm your enemy. When for all these years, I think it's been years, you call me brother. This is why I tell y'all, there's no such thing as peace. What we have is controlled violence. Because at any time, as you can see, this person started using profanity towards me. Being very disrespectful. And I don't care about your damn money. You can't buy me. If you want to help, that's good. But because you send me a donation or because you do something for me, I don't owe you nothing. You're supposed to have done that out of the kindness of your heart and because you want to help me do this work. I didn't force you to do anything. But some people think folks are up. They can be bought and sold. I can't be bought and sold. Try me. Try me, America. Try me, anybody. Give me some dollars. Clock me some dollars. And then see if I will submit and bow down to you. You have a very rude awakening. I'm not going to be bought. And when a black man can't be bought, he really becomes dangerous. Especially we have a message to awaken the masses of the people. This one here thought he was awakened. So, I cannot tolerate that. Immediate block. Immediate remove the comments. Block for six months probation. Now, whether this person returns or not, I could care less. But you're not going to show me that type of disrespect after spitting and grinning in my face. You damn faker hiding behind a picture. But what do you expect from people that hide behind pictures? Because when you hide behind these pictures, and it's not for everybody, so give me no comments. Well, I like you. I wouldn't do that to you, and I, I don't show my face. I'm talking about usually when people hide behind a picture, there's a reason. And on his page, he has a picture that's supposed to be him, but that could be of anybody. That could be Michael Jackson. That could be Fred from the corner store. Who knows what that, who that picture is. It's easy to make a video. Make a video. Show your face. You got so much to talk about. Know so much. Make some videos. As long as I'm your, you think that I'm here to please you. I'm not here to please you or nobody. I'm here to look out for the best interest of my people whether I like it or not. I'm not here to please you or anybody. I'm here to bring real truth. 
and real truth hurts. The first thing the black man and woman must do in this nation, you must know who you are. You must know yourself. And what is self? According to a video I just made stating that Angel Snuff Nuff 7 is African first. According to Ebony and Jet Publishing Company, they taught us back in 1973 that the root of self, you must look towards Africa, not here, not in Alabama, not in Mississippi. You can get hung and raped and lynched in Alabama, Mississippi, and Arkansas or whatever. But the root of you, your family, begins in Africa, not here. This is where your kidnapping, where you were stolen and brought to, our ancestors, and you grown to love this evil and wicked place. And you've been turned into a dark European. This person is why I tell us, even so-called pro-black people, they are dark Europeans. Instead of just focusing his or her hatred upon the whites who they claim they don't like. Because they still carry the mentality of the oppressor even though they may not see the so-called Negro or black American as an enemy. They still turn toward other dark people to spew their hatred upon. So... This person hates Mexicans and this person hates Africans and any all any all these other dark people who were the victims of white supremacy. And any type of bias and prejudice or attitude they have towards us is because of at the root of it was because of the oppressor. You show me in history anywhere else where we had bad relations. The bad relations started when this European began to colonize and conquer dark people. You don't care nothing about that. Because you only see yourself as a victim. And other dark people on the earth, they are doing all right. How are they doing all right when they have suffered? Almost as much as we have. The only privilege they've had is they were allowed to remain on their motherland. No more, no less. This person sounds like a white supremacist conditioned to hate dark people. And in this case, has an extreme hatred towards Africa and Africans. My first part and I would never sell my people out. They are my first priority. They are the reason why I exist. And I am one of them. So I would not seek any relation with Africa or Asia or any. Sell us out. We've already been sold out living here. Why would I continue that? Silly behavior. And we get nothing out of the relationship. Any relationship we have with Africa or Asia. Or even here. If we stay here. It must be a benefit to us. And there is no benefit. Even this dark European pro-black wannabe will agree. There is no benefit that we have living here. Everything that we are. Anything we become. All our credit. Go to our oppressor. All our debits, all the negative, they don't mind giving to us. I would be seriously wrong to deny myself and us a relationship with the place our ancestors call home. You cannot deny a person their birthright. All human beings have the right to know their parents. And adopted or a foster child may love their foster parents 
their adopted parents, but deep down inside, all of you, and you know that it's true. You want to know that which you, where you came from. You yearn to know your biological parents. Black folks, the so-called Negro in America, we were denied our birthright. This oppressor who you don't mind loving, some things you like about them, some things you don't. But you still want to be here in America with those who oppress you daily. It ain't stopped. We've been denied our birthright, the right to know our parents for over 300 years, and we have fallen in love with this false parent. We've fallen in love with the oppressor. Just like this person. He hollers. He don't like white folks and all like that. But at the same time, he doesn't want to attempt to find a relationship with his real mother and father. A child wants to know their mother and father regardless to their condition. They can be poor, they can be rich, they can be uh, disabled, whatever, whatever that problem may be. They don't care. I want to know where I come from. With all this dark European male hate, always talking bad about white folks, he still has enough love for them that... They are a better foster parent rather than trying to seek a relationship with his real mothers and fathers. That's why I always say the dark European is a very sick individual, confused and hurt so bad they really don't know what to do. This person claims Africa abandoned us. So the question arises, when did they realize we were gone? There are 50, over 50 countries in Africa who should be responsible for the abandonment. When the invader at the same time was terrorizing them. This dark European claims he hates Caucasian people, racist white people. But when the white man's media supports his claims, then he or she or, or it is willing to uh, use it. For an example, he tells me that Africans, Africa is filled with people who kill, rape, and rob, and they starve them. You know the the usual stereotypical report that the racist Caucasian media put out before the world speaking about Africa. Now, the question arises, out of 50 countries, who are these people? Who are the nations involved that's filled with rape and murder and starving? Is it all 50? Who are you talking about? And why are you trying to degrade and make mockery and down Africa? In the United States, right now as I speak, in Long Island, New York, they are looking for a serial killer. That sounds like murder. Ain't, don't serial killers, do, don't they murder the same thing that you are saying that happens in Africa? There are rapists in America, the same thing in in uh, Africa, they rape somebody. Somebody gets raped in America every day. Somebody getting raped as I speak. Somebody being murdered. America is the number one nation that incarcerates people. And it incarcerates people for what? For being good? No, because they were accused of a crime. Like, like perhaps Murder, rape, things of that nature. That's why you go 
to prison. And also, the majority in these high security prisons are dark people. I wonder why is that? Do you know why that is? Now, you do have something called white collar crime. It's almost like going to some type of a country club. Now, the white collar crime prison filled with racist, Caucasian type people. But white collar crime overall does more damage to society than these uh, people in jail for smoking crack, selling weed or whatever besides murder and pedophilia and things of that nature. White collar crime is more damaging. They will tell you that. But since it is basically all white folks involved in white white collar crime. You don't hear about it. You love your master, don't you? You like how he has taught you. You like how he has conditioned you. Dark European. I'm glad you're off my page. Bye bye. Silly so. What makes America so special? If all over this country, in, in every major city, there are homeless people. There are people that are starving. It is reported in the white man's media that in the public school system, these poor children, these babies, the sometimes the only meal they're going to get of any type of nutrition of value is in school. Other than that, they could be starving. So there's starvation and murder and rape in America. There is rape and murder and starvation in Africa. What is your damn point? You just try to defend the place that you love. America, America. It loves a dark European like you. <laughs> The hospitals. Go visit some of these hospitals. Nursing homes. America is filled with thousands and thousands, if not millions, of sick people. Dying from all kinds of illnesses and diseases. Some of these diseases and illnesses you cannot even pronounce. This supposed to be black person sounds more like a Ku Klux Klan member or somebody from the Nazi party or, or, or skinhead. Sounds like a white supremacist. You should get along with Kilo 34. The genocide scrolls and block them. These devils like that. I would rather take my chances with them than a faker and a confused person like this dark European. The dark European reminds me of an, of, of an abandoned child that do not want their siblings to know their parents because they are angry and unforgiving towards the parents. Something about the parents you don't like. Something about Africa or whatever you personally and chances are it's due to ignorance but for whatever reason, in your mind, you just got this thing and hate Africa and Africans and really all dark people. You really don't like black folks at all, really. That's the bottom line. You are unforgiving and angry, this child, at the parents. So you don't want the other children who have, who it is natural to want to know your biological, your blood, your family. It's natural. You want to keep them and deny them the right to seek a healthy relationship with their parents, their mother and father. Regardless to what mother and father. Mother and father might be a crackhead. And speaking of crackheads, this dark European accused me of talking to us or speaking or describing us in a stereotypical fashion. 
Because I said we cannot go to Africa being crackheads. We can't go to Africa being drunks and so on and so on. We can't even live here being that. That type of behavior is detrimental no matter where we go. In our own neighborhood, in our own personal house, it's detrimental. It's not stereotypical. Many of us suffer from that. And we don't need to take that somewhere else. When they got problems too, we want to be and go to another place when we are the healthiest and strongest we can be. And that's the purpose of me, that's the purpose of Sarah Sudan saying, the nation of Islam and many of us, the Hebrew Israelites, that's the purpose to try to awaken our people so that we can be better. There's nothing stereotypical. I am not talking about us in a stereotypical manner. Because all of us are not like that. But we want all of us to live better and do better. So I want to encourage the crackhead to get off crack. And the alcoholic to stop drinking. And encourage our brothers to um, take care of their children. And these females to stop being so hard, not I hate difficult or nagging the brothers to, to try to encourage us to do better. We already know the negatives. We really need to focus now on the positives. And I'm positive you are wrong. Just because you are angry, you can't deny. The children of slaves who were stolen and kidnapped the right to seek a relationship with their parents. And their parents ain't here. Their parents come from Africa. And that's what I am. And that's what you are, whether you like it or not. You're a child of slaves. And the slaves, the ancestors of the slaves, came from that continent. We have a right, it's a birthright, to know your parents. Now, whether you can develop a good relationship with that parent, who knows? But we have the right to try. In St. Louis, there's a rapper called Nelly. And I was watching his biography or documentary on MTV. His father abandoned him early in his childhood and it hurt him. So I understand what you talk about or speak about because you feel some type of hurt because you believe that Africa abandoned us and I raise these questions that you can't answer. And Nelly's father, there are circumstances in people's lives that cause them to do what they do. Who's to say? Who's to know? But when it's all said and done, Nelly still loved his father. And his father wasn't a bad person. Things happen to people. Something happened to Africa. And you're living with the root cause of it. This European American and other Caucasian people when they invaded the continent. All over this planet, wherever you find dark people. That's what happened. Africa did not abandon us. We were stolen and kidnapped. And then, and made lost. They lost us. And when you lose something, it's soon forgotten. Made deaf, dumb, and blind. We lost the connection to our birthplace our ancestors birthplace and who our people were now our people have pale skin and they smile in our face and they don't di direct you to Africa just like you won't do it cause you one of them dark European male if that's what you are I don't know you just what you claim to be you're a faceless person 
Now with all your so-called hatred for white folks, you still love them to a certain point because this is all that you know. This is all that you know is America. And America, the one who you really love subconsciously, they kept Africa away from you and the knowledge of your people and everything that we were, our culture, our God, everything about ourselves, our real selves, not the dark European you turned into, they kept that knowledge and kept the African away from us. At the root of the problem is the racist Caucasian European people who divided and conquered dark folks. And you continue that mentality. How do you have the right to tell these black people not to seek relationship with their parents and their parents is African? Both Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Marcus Garvey, both two honorable brothers, will always be remembered. They taught us to either exodus from America or embrace Africa. These two are our greatest leaders. There are no greater leaders than Elijah Muhammad and Marcus Garvey. Show me somebody greater with greater accomplishment than these two strong men. Why would we listen to you who hide behind a picture, faceless, rather than these two brothers who stood against the evil you wish to intercourse with? How was Marcus Garvey treated by the people who you want to stick around and stay with? They deported Brother Marcus Garvey, they jail and harass Elijah Muhammad. The enemy does not want to hear that type of talk because as long as you keep your white mind, you will behave just like you're behaving right now. Oh, I don't want nothing to do with Africa. I hate the Africans. And then the man that you claim that you hate, this racist white fellow, he's clapping his hand. He's glad that you unsubscribe. He's glad that you're not a friend. He's glad. So I hope that you're happy making your adopted father happy. The enemy does not want family to be reunited. Because the power, this unification of the dark will mean the end of their world. Because it was created by the exploitation to divide and conquer the dark. Now, if you notice, the European himself, he still has a strong relationship with Scotland and England and Poland and all where his roots is. They go back and forth to Europe every day. But you have become so silly, you would, you would reject to embrace your own people. Oh, dark European. Now, you cannot make nobody love you. And we really don't know each other because we've been here for 400 years. And Africa been doing their thing. We've been trying to do our thing here. You can't make nobody love nobody. But these kidnapped children, those born descendants of slaves, have the right. And we makes no difference who makes the first move. We should make an attempt to find a relationship with our people. Like all other people do. All over this planet. Jewish people, especially after the Holocaust, did everything they could to get away from the place that terrorized them. But blacks or dark Europeans or backyard Negroes in the United States are cowardly and would rather just bear with the continued oppression and injustice and attempt to work with a people 
after over 40 years, they ain't changed their spots. They still doing the same thing. Except smarter. You still getting rich. You still getting raped. You still getting abused, discriminated. Everything except now is more slick. Pay attention to your friends, Kilo 34, the Genocide Scroll. Those are your buddies. Who think you should be satisfied because of the crumbs that you get off the off your foster parents' table and eventually the jail cell? Surely the dark European is a strange creature, insane person. But what do you expect? You were born into it, a product of a racist society. I feel sorry. I really do. I feel sorry for you. Because you think you know, you think that you know better and doing better. Now, this person, this dark European, who once called me a brother and a friend, is angry at a black man. When black people, you have the right to love yourself. And whether you like it or not, self, according to Ebony and Jet Magazine, Johnson Publishing Company, self is Africa. Whether I like it or not, or you like it or not, that's self. We are not root, and we are not friends or no family to the people here. We were brought here to be their chattel, their tools. They're beasts of burden. May I also add. With this person. Who remains faceless. Is a known black woman bashing. I'm shocked that he hung around my channel for so long. Because everybody knows this channel is very, very pro-black woman. And it seems that at the root of his hatred is female, period. And of course we know that Africa is called Mother. Mother Africa. And since he has the racist dark European mind, the racist Caucasian male also hates Mother. Oppresses mother, exploits mother. He hates the female. This dark European is indeed a very strange creature. <laughs> now, let me go ahead. Let me get a swig first. Let me attempt. To once again bring our talk to conclusion. I want to, I do not want to be the bearer of bad news. But there is also good news that indeed we who live at this time are a chosen people. Those who wish to be just, those who wish to be righteous, those who wish to be what religion calls moral, those who wish to treat a person like they want to be treated. This is your time. There's a changing of the God. You can be, you and I can and will become part of this great change. But I would like to, the bad news is to tell us that those of us who live today, we will not see the end of our works. We are just the catalyst or the beginning of a process to bring into reality the kingdom 
of God like they talk about in religion. And to break up this evil, vile, and wicked world once and for all. We are the callous. We are the beginning of it. Some of y'all believe that you are gods and goddesses now. You are not and will never be in your lifetime. I, I hate to tell you that, but it's true. You have the potential, but you will not live long enough to actually become uh, an example of those titles. But you will, and we can do what we can to put our babies Regardless of race, this has nothing to do with color. To put the human children, destroy all this madness that we live in now, and to put our children, not kids, our children on a path to become, not talk about or believe, but become the gods that we pray and so happy to call ourselves. See, the reason why we can't be these gods and goddesses, we can only help in the process. Our very, very beginning, our very genesis was contaminated. The sperm that was made to make us contaminated. The egg contaminated. The embryos are adulterated and we are born deformed Physically, sometimes physically and mental. Our minds have become tainted, living and being born in an immoral, violent, vile and filthy environment. That's why we always have to try. That's why you got to pray seven times a day. Because you got so much evil around you, you got to keep reminding yourself. It's evil. Oh Allah, it's evil. Oh Jesus, it's evil. Evil's all around me. You got to keep praying. You got to keep, keep praying. Because filth is always jumping on you. So you're always battling, trying to keep your sanity. Trying to keep your eye on the prize that your God has promised you this great reward. But you get weak because you're fighting evil 24 hours a day. You watch television is evil. The movie is evil. Go out in the street is wickedness. Filth, vulgarity, and profanity surround you 24 hours a day. It'll wake you up out of your sleep and you probably dream nasty dreams. <laughs> you know you do. That ain't your wife. <laughs> when an immature child watches an adult drive a car, the immature child believes they can drive a car. They don't know. They haven't given, been given the opportunity or nothing, but they believe. That's what happens when we are immature. Because we're not tall enough to reach the pedal. Or whatever reason, we cannot drive the car. So, we're looking at the car, but even as a baby, you think, and you watch your parents drive a car, you say, I can do that. I believe I can do it. But then upon practice, and as you mature, your belief turns into what? You know, and you get behind the wheel, and you drive the car. A young bird out of the nest starts flapping his wings. And as the bird flaps his wings, I'm very sure in his mind is saying, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. <laughs> but pretty soon, as the wings get stronger, and the bird begins to understand what flight is, and it practices, pretty soon it begins to fly. And belief from the child and belief from the bird becomes I know. Uh oh, oh. Woo! Yes! That's, that's what I'm trying to get us to understand. We want to turn belief into knowing. And your God 
claims to be not the all believer. He leaves the believing to you because you are immature. You don't know. But God, your father that you claim, is the all knower. God don't believe in nothing. He knows. Leaves the believing to you, the child, and you even say yourself, I'm a child of God. So when are you going to practice it? Flapping your wings. We don't turn that belief to knowing. That's why you can't believe. That's why you can't. That's, that's another reason why not only the physical aspects of becoming God, but because of the mental aspects, you can't, believe, you can't turn into God because you are immature. You are a believer. And you don't really know how to no. You've also been corrupted in this filthy society. See, because God means law. God is a law bringer. One of the first things that God did when, uh, the, uh, when Moses came from up out of Egypt was to bring what? Bring law. God means law. God means control. God means discipline. God means balance. But here you are, a God and a goddess. You have no respect for law. You have no control. You have no discipline. You are a balance. And I'll give you a very simple example, God and goddess. And I know the first thing you're going to say is the white man law. But if the law, regardless who created it, if the law was designed for a purpose, let's say traffic law, speed limits, those laws were designed not because of black, white, those laws were designed to attempt to make the public safe for everybody because we sharing this one road. But do you have respect for the law? No, you don't. You jaywalk. You speed. You do it. You do it every day, and you know you're breaking the law. Y'all run stop signs and stop lights. You don't care because you have no respect for the law. So how, if you don't have no respect for the law, how are you gonna be God? The universe is balanced. It's under some type of law, some type of control. Without control, without balance, then there will be anarchy and chaos as represented in this world created by white supremacy. As long, or if you look and examine at the history of Caucasian people, it's always been war, murder, rape, injustice, oppression, exploitation. That's what you get when you have no balance. Even in your creativity, you create things, but they create poisons. They create things to kill you. Yeah, you drive a car, and having a car is a wonderful thing, but that exhaust, burning those fossil fuels, that gas puts poison in the air that you need to live as well as your future generations. So it brings death. Because there is no control, there's no law, there's no balance, there's no respect for the earth that brought you into existence and soon you will return. There are those who have wonderful wisdom. There are many of you who speak beautiful words and you know and you've done some research and you are a wise person, but you taint your wisdom with profanity and vulgarity, with filth. And you are angry because many see that you are filthy and vulgar, and you, and you know anything that is filthy and vulgar, you either want to clean it up or you try to avoid. If you saw some feces on a bench, you wouldn't sit in it. 
you'll clean it up first. So here you are, brothers and sisters. Many of you have beautiful messages. But you've got to say, mother this, kiss my this, suck my penis, all that kind of stuff, nigga. You got to do all. You got to you take beautiful wisdom and you follow it up. How are you gonna become God when God is the cleaner upper? God makes the foul clean. God cleans up the dirty. That's what God and goddesses do. They don't foul. They make things pure. It's the Holy Bible. Because it's supposed to be the Word of God. It's the Holy Quran. Because it's supposed to be the God, the Word of God. The Word of Allah. So God cleans things up. But you want to be a God and a goddess. But you want to be filthy and dirty. And a filthy and dirty God is called what? Satan. Lucifer. A deceiver. So really, you really confuse. It makes no difference because you're not going to be God anyway. You can talk it. You'll never be there anyway. And these behaviors are the reason why you will never be. It's up to our babies and put them in the right direction. But you mess up the baby's mind because they think being a god or a goddess, you can still act like a trap. You can still be a thug and a gangster. And all these things we find in this world, you can still be a nigger. And that's another thing. Y'all love that word nigger. And you say it's a contaminated word that that's nigger, N-E-G-U-A or something like that. But see, y'all not tripping off of that. You know damn well you say nigger the same way that the slave master called us. And the and in your religious teaching, in religion, it says, as a man thinketh, so is he or she. I'm going to ask she. They always, they always forget and ignore womanhood. I'm not going to forget womanhood. So I'm going to always remind us, God can be, can easily be a she also. So since you keep telling these people, nigga this, you're a thug that, as a man thinking, so is he. They could, they, you keep this attitude going on and on and on. It never dies. And you are God, all right. The God of slime. The God of filth. Vulgarity and profanity. And profanity is a sign of an ignorant mind trying to express itself. And that's why you continue to fail. Is because you don't know how to express yourself. Because you think, because you think something wrong with being, being pure and kind and fresh. And you think that being savage, being strong and tough. Well, if you're so strong and tough, how come you're still a damn slave? How come you're still under the white man? And how come your people still don't support you? Is it worth it? You'll get a handful. But you'll never get these because they're looking for a God to clean them up. You look for a God when you are dirty. You look for God when you have no other place to go. When you're hopeless and you're depressed. So you reach out to God. Who will reach out to somebody and call them a nigger? Only a fool. Because niggas don't bring healing. Niggas don't clean nobody up. Niggas get you dirty. So I'm not going to call us and call you no nigger. In fact, I'll put on a tie for you and look clean for you because you deserve it. When you're trying to heal the sick, you put them in a sterile and clean environment. <laughs> oh man. Let us go ahead on. You have a, a message. Beautiful messages. 
clean water, but you've chosen to put your clean water in a dirty glass and you are angry because nobody really want to drink it. They see that your glass is dirty. Don't you see that your glass is dirty? You have become diseased. And the speaker of these words are diseased. Can the blind lead the blind? Well, really sometimes they can. But in this case, no. Can the sick heal the sick? Show us your healing. There is no healing going on. You becoming a different kind of nigga. That's what you have been then we come. Now. But this is expected. Like again. This goes back to. What I was telling us about the dark European. I don't care. How pro black. Black power hotel. Ashe. All this stuff. These people be hollering and screaming. Don't mean nothing. Deep down inside. They still white. A dark version of white supremacy. The only thing you're doing is trading the white man for a black one. Instead of a Caucasian slave master, now you are happy, skin in the grin, black power, because now you got a black slave master. Which we've experienced blacks being slave masters in history also. We should wish to escape any form of servitude, any type of exploitation or oppression. And the beginning of the process is with us. And if we do it correctly, once we break the shackle of race and gender bias and classism, once we break these isms, we can place our children, our babies, on a path and begin this process where where we have to believe because we are immature at this time where we have to believe in stuff they can know and be our God know that they are goddesses in fact don't have to say it just be it be it it is And once they become gods, and in this process of becoming a god, they will solve this problem once and for all and learn the tragic lessons of the past. And once they become gods, you don't have to worry about them ever again being slaves. Just like the Jews never ever again worry about being victims in some holocaust because once our babies become gods really don't have to talk about it just be that God don't serve nobody God did serve but God don't serve nobody so we'll never be a slave the human family must be free of gender, gender bias and and racism, white supremacy and classism and all these different things that got us all messed up. And as long as we live in the dirt, some of the dirt gonna stay on us. That's why we can't be gods and goddesses. But by the time as the process moves along, the babies will get that filth off of them. And they will be placed into the right soil to bring up the right tree and bear the right fruit. We can't do it because we're dirty. Our fertilizer is contaminated. Our soil is contaminated. Our very beginning is contaminated. But that don't stop us from putting our children, all children, putting our babies on the path. To bigger and better things that we could not even imagine 
But they'll turn around one day and look at us and say, wow. Look what they have caused us to become. Or do we still want to stay in this condition and call our children to become slaves for other people? What they call that? Wage, wage slaves. W-A-G-E. Wage slaves. Exploited. Experimented on by drug companies. Alcoholics. Dope fiends. Sex maniacs. Pedophiles. Incest. All this mess. You want to continue this madness? I can guarantee you once we break white supremacy or race, it'll all be up the mountain. And we can join and experience the mountaintop that Brother Martin Luther King once said. He already been to the mountaintop. And he may not get there with you. But we're going to get there. All of humanity. Martin Luther King did not just speak for black folks. Martin Luther King loved everybody. Loved everybody. And stood for anybody that suffered injustice. Oppression. Discrimination. And he was hated for it. By his own people. You're supposed to be. Just stand for the blacks. Just like this person don't want me to care about African people or, or just us. When the situation requires, it's not just about us. Because when it's all said and done, all of humanity came from Africa. The origins of humanity, we all go back to Africa. And we all go back to the black. Because when you die, you go back to the black. And when they put you in the ground, they put you back in that black dirt. And if you're light-skinned, you turn black. You're not going to escape that. And you, you dark European, whether you like it or not, when you go in the ground, they're going to call you an African-American. They still going to consider you related to Africa and the black. You need to get your act together. Swallow your pride. And begin to understand what has happened to us. We know so much history that we don't know nothing. And that's why I made a video talking about us. Reading all these books. We know so much. We know so much that we don't know nothing. Always looking for higher knowledge. And don't understand and have not mastered what we already have gained. Going on, we jumping from the kindergarten to college. And you wonder why you're still a damn slave. These things must be destroyed once and for all. Race, white supremacy, so-called black supremacy, gender bias, matriarchy, patriarchy, all the archies, all the isms. All this must be destroyed. We must learn from the bee. And there's a chapter in the Holy Quran called the bee. There's a reason why the bees still exist virtually unchanged for millions if not trillions of years. They work together. They, there is no big shot. We have to learn that. But because of an unnatural people, they have turned the human family, the mind, opposite of what is natural. And so now, when we were trying to do good for the planet, now we are destroying the planet. But that is over. That is over. It is now time for the former things to pass away. And we who live now, even though we may not be the true gods and goddesses, we may not, we will not reach the potential of being gods and goddesses like we would like to be. 
But still, you should say, oh, happy day. <laughs> happy day. Because this will be the most important period of time in humanity. Those who can break this disease called white supremacy. This disease called patriarchy. This disease classism. All these isms and archaisms and all this, all this whatever. You can break that, you're a bad boy. And even though we may not have the potential and can be the gods and the goddesses in our imagination of what we want to be, but guess what? In a way, you are God because only a God can break this thing that has been around for thousands and thousands of years. But finally, it has met its match in you and me. And we should be so, so very proud. And future generations will always remember those. Maybe not by your name. But they will remember these human beings during this period of time. Smart enough. Intelligent enough. Strong enough. Disciplined enough. Bad enough. To put all these isms and all this crap. That's been so strong for thousands of years. Finally kill this damn dragon. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Talik Even Raw. Love speaking with you. We learn together. This is not about me. This is about we. This is not about I. This is about us. This is not about black. This is not about white, red, yellow. This is about us. Humanity breaking this madness once and for all so we can live a decent day of life for a change. At least, before you take your last breath, at least, hopefully, you can for real die in peace and rest in peace. Enjoy some heaven while you live. I don't know about heaven after you die. I hope that is true. But it's also nice to have some heaven on this earth while you live. I don't see nobody in their right mind in a rush to die and go to heaven or wherever. So please, let us think for ourselves. Think for ourselves, people. And whether you embrace Africa or not, I am because that's where I come from. And I was denied the right to know and have a relationship with my people. There are those of you, I'm going to say this, there are those of you right here in America, you don't have a good relationship with your family. So what the hell do you expect from Africa? Some of you, some of y'all don't have a good relationship with your mother, father, sisters, and brothers, and y'all see some of these people every day. So what do you expect? So what type of relationship we are supposed to have with Africa when we were stolen, lost for over 400 years? Come on, think people. Who caused all this? The victim always get blamed. It's the African. It's the black folks in America. It's the Mexicans. Who started? What's at the root of it all? And the people at the root sit back and they laugh and all of y'all. And the reason why you do it, a lot of you do, because you're scared of the white man because he might take his plane and bomb you. Put you in jail on false charges and kill you. Anything. You are afraid. Well, this is what I was taught. A brave man dies one time. A coward dies over and over and over again. I'd rather die brave one time. Because I did live that coward way. And it ain't fun. It ain't nothing beautiful about it. When I stood up and fought back against those who I was scared of. I didn't care. Kill me. I'm not going to keep living being scared and afraid of you. Dying every 
day instead of just dying one time and get it over with. Well, since they did not murder me, that made me a stronger person. And basically, that's the reason why I am the way I am because I stood up against power. I was afraid. But when you stand up and fight that which you are afraid, you find out that that power and those things you think that made you afraid wasn't so powerful to begin with. Ain't so strong. The hell with these people in this nation. You will treat us with justice or we will do what we have to do. To seek our freedom. The Bible. And the Quran. When you're dealing with evil people. We like to. It's beautiful to talk peace. But when you're dealing with somebody. That's just so evil and wicked. You got to go to war with them. I don't want to talk about. Fighting and dying and killing people. Or whatever. But we can't keep living like this. And these bastards, they don't want to understand what you're talking about. They in their own la-la world. Because white supremacy benefits them. They don't want to let that go. They don't want to be fair. They have no character. They have no honor. They have no compassion for nobody. They didn't even have compassion for their own people. Research their own history. What white folks did to their own. Terrible. And that's why I don't understand white people, why you want to keep this going. Because you have so much hatred for black folks. You see what your people have done, those in power. Why you want to keep supporting the evil. And when you speak against me and brothers and sisters that are fighting in this struggle, the only thing you're doing is defending those wicked white people in power. Because you don't have no power. You don't have no influence. Or do you? So maybe you one of them. With that said, brothers and sisters, friends, associates, even enemies, thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. And uh, I am the Angel Snuffed Up 7.